understand. The signs are not always going to be Aries first house, Taurus second house. It doesn't work that way. In 24 hours, they're moving through that houses all the time. 24 hours, it takes two hours for the sun to move through a house. So if you're born at 6 o'clock, let's say, let's say you're born at 6, let me do it this way. Okay. If you're born at 6 a.m., right here is the first house. This is called the ascendant. It's where the sun ascends. This is the descendant over here. Descendant. Okay, that's where the sun goes down, right here. This is the this is called the highest point of the chart. Okay, thanks. Honey. This is the this is called the midheaven, because it's above us, right above us, straight up. And this is the nadir. It's the point below the earth. Okay, it's called the nadir, or the they call it ICMC. This would be medium coli. It's Latin. This is you know I mean like coli. Co this is the Latin for the opposite. If you see ICMC, you're talking about midheaven MC. I see is down here. Anyway, the only point I'm getting at is that if the sun is rising in the east and you're born at 6 o'clock, you're going to see a sun right here, rising in the east. It's going to, and two hours later, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be, well, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Okay. Uh, let's do it this way. All right. Okay. Two hours later, it's going to be at the 12th house cusp, roughly. I mean, it's, it's going to take two hours to move up here. And then two more hours. And so let's say it's 6 o'clock. This is at 8, 8, 8 a.m. It's going to be about there. And then about 10, 10 a.m., it's going to be right here, the sun. It's going to be moving. And at 12 o'clock, it's going to be up here, okay, at 12 noon, okay? Now, does it mean exactly no? Because, um, you know, it, it's going to be roughly. It depends on time of year. You know that the sun is different speeds at different different t time. It, it, the sun's not setting at eight or 6 o'clock at night here in Florida because of the latitude we live in, right? So the chart's going to see that. If you're doing a chart for the Miami, for example, you know, at 8.30 at night, it's still, it's still sitting right here, the sun. It's just setting. Up in the north, it would be already set. In Boston, it's already set at 6 a.m. probably. You see what I'm saying? So, okay. Any questions? Any you getting? So, so if you have, if you're born at 12 midnight, you're going to see the sun's down here. Now, let me tell you, when you're doing a chart, this is the quickest way to check, make sure you're accurate. Because it's easy to make a 12-hour mistake in doing a chart. If somebody says they're born at 8 a.m. and you do it for 8 p.m., guess what? You're 12 hours off, right? So the, as soon as you can finish the chart and you look at it and say, well, they told me they were born 12 noon or 11 o'clock, you know the sun's got to be up here. Or if it was midnight, you know it's going to be down here. If it's 6 p.m., it's going to be over here. So you know, if you made a 12-hour mistake, you're going to say, oh, my gosh, it's over here. It should have been over there. Okay? So. Oh, exactly does. Yeah, sure it does. And so, and so, you know, this this only moves, you know, this the sun only moves about a degree a day. The moon moves about 12 degrees, sometimes 14 depends. Some it can move 10 or 12 or 14 degrees. It spins sometimes it's faster than other times. But the point being, so if you don't know your time of birth, let's say I did Nesman chart. I did it for, I did it for 6 a.m. because I didn't know the time. Okay, let's assume in his chart, I don't remember. Do you have your chart in front of you? Yeah. Where's your moon? Tell me where it's at. Just look at the, okay, Elena help you. She'll help you. Tell me where the moon is. I have all your charts done tonight, by the way. Yours too, everything's done. I'll give them to you. Where's it at, Elena? Okay, so the moon is down here. What degree? Uh, is it 40, 45? No, no, that's the minutes. 19, 19 degrees Scorpio. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Huh? It's six, six degrees. Oh, it's six degrees. Okay. Okay, it's six degrees right there. Six degrees Scorpio. Now, let's, let's look at this a minute. I want to show you something. 
let's say, since I didn't know his time of birth, I had to do a six o'clock in the morning chart. But let's assume that he was born at, uh, let's say, 12 hours later. And he was not really born at 6 a.m., but he was born at 6 p.m., okay? That's a half a day, isn't it? And if the moon moves 12, let's say average moon is 12 degrees a day, that means that this could be, instead of at 6, if he was born in the evening, it could be a 12 degree Scorpio. You see what I'm getting at? If it moves 12 degrees a day, and we've got him born at the a.m., but yet he's born at 6 p.m., then this could move from 6 to 12, which means that it might change an aspect in the chart because it may not be doing something that I thought it was because it's, not, it's, it's moved so much. So if I'm doing a chart that I don't know the time, I'm a little careful about the moon. I may ask questions rather than make statements because I'll say, whoa, maybe I'm, I'm reading this aspect when I shouldn't. Uh, I would ask him, I can ascertain pretty much if the chart's accurate because I'll ask him questions uh, relating to maybe the mother, uh -huh. early childhood, you know, things like that. I remember when I, excuse me, but I remember when I did his chart, a lot of issues with his family. Do you remember me telling you that? You know, rough childhood, really not good par parenting. Forgive me. Um, and I saw that, okay. And, and so I knew I was pretty close on the accuracy of the chart, but I didn't ask him that, I told him that. Right. You see the difference? Because the moon wasn't, I, it couldn't have moved that much from where it was in aspect. I knew that, because I'm, you know, I've been doing this for years. So it doesn't take a lot of mathematics for me to calculate in my mind. Okay, you know, it's gonna be close to accurate. Okay, so I'm losing my pants. <laughs> huh? I'm losing weight. Lost weight. Yeah, I notice that. Yeah, yeah, and something. So, so, anyway, so you get a feeling. 6 a.m., 12 noon, sun. That's how you can look at a chart real quick. See if they did it right. You, some, you go to an astrologer. They bring you a chart. You can real quick look at it and say, hmm, this doesn't make sense. He's got my sun over here. It should be over there, or it should be up there instead of down here. You see? So, anyway, okay. So we're we're kind of moving through this. Okay, um, the rising sign is always a sign rising on the eastern horizon. You, people will say, what's, they'll usually, if you ask, uh, you talk to somebody in astrology, they'll say three things. Where's your sun? Where's your moon? What's your rising sign? Rising sign's your ascendant, right here. What's rising in the east when you're born? It doesn't mean the sun's there. It means what's the sign on the cusp. For example, when I was born, I have Sagittarius rising. And I have Venus right there on my ascendant. Okay. What's Venus do? Gives nice form. Venus gives balance, harmony. You know, so my features, Aries, my first house, describes my appearance, your appearance, and your chart. If you have Saturn rising in the east, you'll tend to have a, a more darker complexion and maybe dark hair. Okay? Why? You're looking at a chart, you're looking at Saturn rules so much. It's, it's biochemistry as well. It really is. It rules sulfur. It rules so many things. It's not just, you know, there's so much more to this. You can get into astrology on a biochemical level. You know, you can get it into neuropsychology. There's so many areas, you know. But the whole point is that you, you'll begin to read. So I have Sagittarius rising. That means I'm a double Sag because my son's in Sag. Okay? I mean, you can't tell I'm a Sag? My God, you know? I'll throw lightning bolts at you. You know, that's who I am. I am Sag. I am Zeus. That's, and I have Jupiter in Pisces, the cinder of rain. Huh? I've seen that in my own life. There's something to all this, okay? You know? What kind of skills? Artistic skills. Um, probably did as a young child, but my parents destroyed it. I was a good draftsman. I was, uh, I was a good artist. I remember once taking a, I made a picture of, my, of a horse and I gave it to my dad. And he, he, he almost was going to, you know, discipline me because he said, you, you traced it. He said, where did you trace this from? I said, I didn't trace it. Don't lie to me. And he scolded me really bad and said I lied to him. 
And so I just put the, put, the, put the canvas down. I never wanted to do another picture. But those are things that can happen to us in our life. Can, uh, can you tell if a person is schizophrenic from early childhood? You can see the tendency of that, yeah. There's something, there's something like manic depressive, Saturn and Jupiter. Highs and highs, very deep lows. Saturn and Jupiter. High is Jupiter. Okay, uh, optimism. Everything's great, right? Next minute, Saturn takes over. What's Saturn say? Oh, man, what an illusion I'm living in, you know? See what? That's Jupiter Saturn together, okay? It can be that. It's called manic depressive. It can be, it doesn't have to be, okay? But it's a lot of emotional issues to deal with in life. You know, I can, I know more than you know I know. I, I love you, and I, I'll speak honestly to you. But I mean, you've been through hell. Jupiter, Jupiter with Saturn means that you've had a battle of battles within. It doesn't mean you've been through hell in that sense of the word. It means that you've dealt with those issues in your life. Of um, life. You have had a wonderful <laughs> life, I know you have. But there's something there that with the issues of Saturn and Jupiter are very powerful. And it may be religious um, conflicts in your life of being brought up in a certain way, in a certain belief that you had to battle with, maybe a very fundamental type of belief, I don't know. But there's issues, I've talked to you. men? Men's in your life have been part of the hell, okay? Okay, so, <laughs> so that's, you know, I, I don't want to get too personal with you, but I mean, I, I can, I know a lot about when I do a chart. Anyway, so, so, see, remember I, earlier I said to you, I said you've had to learn a lot about letting go of past things. Remember I said that? And you've had to learn to let go of the accusing that you've had to self-accusing and accusing others because you've had to deal with people that have done a lot of wrong to you. And in that case, Saturn is trying to work on that Jupiter level of forgiveness. Jupiter's Jupiter's Jesus. Saturn is Satan. So you've been battling with those energies, okay? I don't want to get too personal, but enough of that. So it's not about good. You know, Jupiter, Jupiter with Saturn is also a teacher because Jupiter is, is what? Jupiter's optimism. Saturn's saying, I'm going to teach you something in life. I'm going to teach you what? Optimism. Okay? You know, Saturn is trying to do that with Mesmer right now. Saturn's moving over his Jupiter. It's saying, look, it's time for you to wake up. Be positive. Be out, you know. Be looking forward and stop looking backward. That's what he's trying to teach you right now. That's why he's there. You see it? You were born with that energy so to learn that, okay? I'm here to learn that. I've got to let go of these things, let go of these hurts, let go of this, these accusing people that are in my life, and I've got to move forward. Anyway, enough of that. So we're, when we're doing a chart, you're going to start pulling all this together, you know? Uh, what did, how did I get there? Okay. We're talking about the ascendant in your chart. That's important. Now, you've got two weeks till you come back to class. No 4th of July meeting. I'm going to give you an assignment. I said I wouldn't do that last week, but I'm going to give you assignments. One of the assignments is going to be to look at the aspects and then give me some interpretations of them as best you can. Okay, so if you have, if you have Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, I want you to get as much information as you can. You're going to have a textbook. I didn't give you one. You've got a workbook. You're going to have that. You're going to have your chart. I've got even done uh, computers, computer interpretations okay, of your chart. The reason I give you those, because a computer com interpretation can never do what the astrologer does. The astrologer puts it all together, takes it apart. All a computer would do is say, you've got Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, and it gives you interpretation. It doesn't say, oh, but by the way, it's making a trine to this aspect or a square to that one. Therefore, it's now got a new meaning and it's being stressed or it's being helped, you can't do that in a computer very well. So the next thing it'll say is, well, you've got Jupiter trying um, the sun in your chart or whatever. So it'll give another reading. But you've got to put it all together. But I'm going to give it to you because it'll help you understand your own chart. It'll give you some place to start from, to work with. All right. So, okay. So, all right. Let's, uh, we're going to feed you this time. Last time, I'm sorry, we didn't. Okay, if we just we were going for three hours last time, I think, huh? Wow, you guys just sat there so attentive. I mean, really, you were so polite. Put up well, with me for. Well, today, Betsy asked me, "What is a house?" So I told him, "You will learn this from Ron." Yeah, 
The house is a, the 12 divisions of a chart. The first house is always from the ascendant to the second house to here. So this is the first house ascendant, second house is here. These don't change. Third house is here, okay? And your fourth house is here, fifth house is here, sixth, all the way around, seventh. And each house has a meaning. Seventh house, people say, oh, I don't have anything in my seventh house, so I'm not going to get married. You know, because it's a house of marriage, right? That's, it doesn't work like that. You go look for the ruler of the house and the sign that it's on that house, and you look for the ruler, and then you start reading it and interpreting it. So here's your eighth house. It's called the house of death. Oh, my gosh. It's the house of rebirth, regeneration. It's the house of sex. We don't talk about it. It's Scorpio. We can't talk about anything to do with Scorpio. Okay? You know, that's a no-no. You know, what I desire. What's the key word of, 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 of Scorpio in... It's I desire, okay? So that's Scorpio, eighth house, you know? In the old days, it wasn't, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't a scorpion, it was an eagle. In the old days, it was a much more noble symbol. So it's uh, ruled by Pluto, Pluto, Mars, okay? Pluto is, as I taught you last week, remember? Of all the signs, and you, didn't, you missed this last week, but I want you to kind of real quick, Every sign is made up of three things. It's made up of the circle, the crescent, and the cross. Every planet, rather, is made up of that, not sign. So the sun is a circle with a dot in it. We, in other words, spirit is made manifest. It's brought into the focus. It's, it's centralized. That's your sun sign. The moon is a double crescent. Venus is what? The circle over a cross. And it's speaking a message. It's saying something. It says spirit rules the senses. The cross is the body, the physical world, your desires, your passions, all that stuff that's physical. Okay, it's where you're crucified. It's where pain comes from, all those things, okay? So, okay. Yeah, go ahead. And then I have um, how we find the ruler of each house. Because I have the position of all the planets. Good, good, given. good. The houses, I know where they are. How, how do you know the ruler? Do you know what sign rules, what planet rules Aries? Good for you. Mars. Mars. Good, good, good. So now you just found the ruler of Aries, of whatever house that is on. If it's, where's, where's Aries in your chart? If it's on the second house, then it means money, possessions. Mars rules that house then. You see what I mean? Okay. Okay, let's say, where's Taurus in your chart? Taurus is ruled by what? Venus. You need to know those rulerships. They're in your workbook. I want you to learn them. Yeah. Next two weeks, when you come back, I want you to have those mastered. Okay, so what rules? When, for example, you say, for example, I know, you have uh, Aries in the, house, the tenth house. Good, how good. Do you, how, how do you interpret that? How, how, no, because you know that. When, when because when you... I was, I was playing, okay, I will start... Give, me your, chart. Chart. Give me your chart. Give me your chart. You don't have your chart. I've got your chart. That's why you don't have it. Okay. By the way. Okay. Here, honey, would you get these out to everybody? Sure. Okay. Also, one more thing. Last week, do you remember Mespin asked me a question about fate and free will? Last week, Mespin asked me a question about fate and free will. And I was kind of not able to answer it, quite frankly. Not to any adequate level because I really wasn't prepared for that. It's too heavy a question for this big group. We couldn't do it in one hour. But what I did was I, I applied myself to writing what I believe about fate and free will and expressing it and what I think it is, okay? So I'm going to give you all... Okay... This is for later. You don't have to read it now. Okay. I'm doing it wrong? What am I saying? Mesfin. 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 F-I-N. What am I calling you? Mesfin. You're calling Mesfin. Oh, well. He knows who it is. <laughs> you have so many. Huh? Oh, keep the extras. Don't give him the, the extras. Now, that's hers, Elaine's. Right here. Yeah. Here, this is the this is answer to his. Here, go ahead and give these. And these are Pass that over, would you? The extras? Uh, no, those are for me. 
This is for you. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, now, I gave you this, but y'all have another. Did you read it? Yes, I did. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. You see, because what, what we don't look into when we talk about fate and free will, how much free will do you have? You don't have it if you're walking in ignorance. Did you hear that? You don't have free will if you're walking in ignorance. Because if you are ignorant of the truth, if you are walking in guilt, accusation, and an accusing spirit, you're going to bring a lot of bad things into your life. And it's going to be, I don't understand why all these bad things happen to me, and it must be my fate to experience these things, right? But you don't see the relationship that you have to the fate, you know? Because who you are is always talking back to you. It's manifesting back to you all the time. You can't escape yourself, you know? So you sow a thought, you reap an act. You sow an act, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you reap a character. And you sow a character and you reap your destiny. Oh, my, did I create my own destiny? Did I create my own life of this misery or whatever pain I'm in? When I was in prison, I'd say, how did I get here? Did I create this? No, let's go to the psychologist and they'll say your parents did it. <laughs> or society made me do it. Let's find a scapegoat. Capricorn, scapegoat. Oh, we're back to Saturn again. Scapegoat. Sign of the goat is Saturn, Capricorn, right? Finding someone to accuse, right? In Israel, in, in Israel, they used to send the goat out to the desert to die. For the sins of the nation would be on its back. It's called scapegoat. So we look for reasons to find other than ourselves why we are in our position in our life. And is it, am I ill-fated? You know, maybe you're creating it. Maybe every word you speak is creating it. By your words, you're judged. A man is perfect in speech is what? Perfect in every way. You want to be perfect? Be perfect in speech. How do you become perfect in speech? You stop thinking and talking, guilt, accusing, fault finding, cursing, cussing. Okay? All right. Okay. Whew. So. Let's go back to your chart. You've got your chart now. Tell me, tell me something about your chart. What's your ascendant right now, dear? Everybody tell me their ascendant. I want to go around the room. Honey, tell me first. Scorpio. Scorpio. And what, is, uh, what, what, are, what, what rules that planet? Uh, that sign, excuse me. Pluto and Mars. Good, good. You're not right on top of it. Good. All right. And where's your Mars in your chart? Mars is in Virgo. Oh. Good for you. Okay. Um, and it's uh, your sin in Scorpio. Your, your ruler is in, and Pluto is where? My first house. Your first house. Whoa. When you, have the, when you have Pluto in your first house and your ascendant is Pluto, that means you are. <laughs> I am. I am Scorpio. I am, I am the transformed one. Okay. You are also very seductive. Excuse me, but you are. You know why? What's that about? What's Scorpio about? It's sexual. It's you know, you know. It's the dance of uh, Shalom. I mean, it's everything. It's like, and it's very sexual. Does that make it bad? No. It's just that's the way it is. People interpret that. They'll see it. They'll see you emanating that energy. And they'll be coming on you all the time. Okay? You know that, right? Okay. So that's just what it, what Scorpio does. You know. But you have Mars in Virgo. You know what that means? You're very puritanical in many ways. Why? Because Virgo is that. Virgo wants it clean and right. Okay? Virgo wants it proper and in order. See? So, you know, don't come with a bunch of nastiness to me because that's not what I'm about. You see where I'm coming from? I'm interpreting her chart, aren't I? Based on one thing. Her ascendant and the ruler. Okay? Who's going to get it next? <laughs> Who's next? Give me an ascendant. Give me yours. Gemini, rising. Is that right? You sure? Okay, and what rules Gemini? Mercury. Mercury. Okay, you're going to learn these. By next week, two weeks, you got to learn. What rules what? You're going to know that, okay? Mercury. Let me see your... Ch uh, I've got it here. The first house. The first house. 
Okay. Okay, let me get the... All right. Huh? Cancer, well, we don't know because he don't know his time of birth. Okay. You remember that. So you can't be real sure about that one. Okay? You can't be real sure on that one. Okay, Mara? How did I get Mara? How did I even put that on your chart, didn't I? Maria? I like it. Huh? Okay, so anyway, you have Gemini rising, and you have Mercury, its ruler. And Mercury is in your um, 11th house, conjunct your sun, of course. Most of the time, it's, not, it's a wider. It's actually conjunct Mars, very close to Mars, 23 and 26. They're only three degrees apart. Okay. <sighs> so, okay, so what are we saying? I am Mars. Mar Mercury, Mercury means I love knowledge. Okay, Mercury is ascending. She has a need for knowledge to learn, to grow. You, you're always going to want to be going to school, if you would. Whatever your interests are, you're going to always be pursuing that. But you have it conjunct Mars, which means that the I am is very assertive and can be very dominating if you want to be. You can be because Mars dominates. But at the same time, I know this because the I am is the first house and Mercury is joined. It means Mars is Mars. It means that you've been under a heavy hand a lot in your life. Okay, and there may be times where you feel a little oppressed. Okay, because Mars is, Mars will, um, Mars will uh, impose its outer will upon you. It's a masculine thing. Okay, so you'll tend to feel sometimes uh, under a heavy hand, in, even in a marriage. Okay, and I, I don't want to get too personal, but the, you know, so there's a tendency for that with Mars and conjunct the ruler of your ascendant. Um, because if it had been in a man's chart, it would be a little better because men are, can manifest the Mars energy more aggressively, more well. In a woman's chart, it tends to be put upon you. You see? Does it, is it making sense? Okay. I think I am more than you know. I know I... Anyway, so I... So, can I? Okay. You still got a green light over there? Yeah. Do you have a green light? No, it's okay. 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 I smell food. Is it tight? Yeah. 